This week on Tech Stuff Tuesday, your enclosure modeling software is wrong, and I'm going to show you why. We're going to take this pipe and extend our port length here, test with both lengths of pipe, our new length and our old length, and we're going to do this backwards. We're going to take this setup, we're going to test those two results, uh, peak frequency, uh, SPL, SPL difference between those two. We're going to do that as set power, and we're going to take those numbers, plug them into two different softwares uh, for modeling boxes, so you can see exactly how wrong they are. This is real-world testing, then going back and putting it in the simulation, not the other way around. So you can actually see how bad off these really are, and I'll explain why. So this is our setup. We have two EMF Audio YOLO V212s. These are two 6-inch ports. Uh, that box is a shared volume of 0.7, that's 0 0.7 cubic feet uh, for the 212s after displacement of the subs. We have a America 12K. Uh, powering these, we are not going to go to the full 12K. Um, we're going to do some good control power levels where it's easy to recharge. I've got seven banks of excess power uh, capacitors down here. And uh, that's how we're going to keep everything as stable as possible and recharge quickly. Make sure we're testing at the same voltage and everything's good there. So we'll have consistent data. So I will uh, put this camera right at the meter so you can see exactly what's happening here. And then we'll take it from there. Okay, so for the port length that you just saw, uh, I have tested and currently 63 hertz, 64 hertz, and 65 hertz at the 500 watt level are all giving me the same identical SPL. So I'm going to do 64 hertz, and I'm going to go up to 2,000 watts, and that will be our baseline for uh, the other port testing as well, and for all the mock up I ran out of track there, um, but we're pretty close on power, so at most I might get another tenth out of that with another 12 watts, but this should get us pretty close here. So we're at 152.6, and again 63, 64, and 65 are all doing the same SPL at 500 watts. Uh, I will test the other one and make sure we get the same result. But that is our uh, score right there with this given length. We will add on the length and then compare the frequency difference and SPL difference at that same power so we can go back and model that. So these are the existing ports. They're 18 and a quarter inches long. We're going to add six inches to the port length. Okay, we have now added the six inches of port length. So we're going to give this a test. And then we're going to go model and compare the results. Okay, so now with the added port length, off camera I found the peak at 500 watts again. And that does, doesn't necessarily mean that is the, the peak at full power, but we're keeping consistent testing here. So at 500 watts, I actually found that 64 and 65 hertz had the same SPL at 500 watts. With the longer port, the peak actually went up a little bit. Uh, 63 it fell off, 62 it fell off even more. Uh, we're going to use 64 hertz on this one. And the target is going to be 2,000 watts again. Uh, one thing that I did notice is the impedance was higher uh, with this setup. So we're going to be playing you know, same frequency, but the impedance is higher. So I suspect the SPL will be higher as well. Uh, but we can also compare that in modeling. So here we go, 64 hertz, 2,000 watts. So there's our SPL now. I think that's uh, within one, I think it was 1988, so 1987 within one watt. Uh, so that's our comparison. And uh, we'll now take this information, go back to modeling, and compare that in two different programs 
uh, because they might give us different results there as well. I've got both of these modeled up with the shorter port and the longer port. So our longer port is the orange line, shorter port is the green line. So what we can tell from here, both boxes are peaking 64 hertz. That's uh, right about there. So that's saying that shorter port would uh, peak at 65.4. Reasonably close, slightly missed the mark. However, our longer port says it's peaking at 57 hertz. Almost 58 hertz. So right in that area, which as we know from testing is wrong. Uh, the orange line here that is the longer port which by the way is tuned to 56 hertz versus 63 on the shorter one. They both peak the same frequency, but this orange line was actually 0.3 dB louder. So this is saying that it is uh, 2.7 dB of gain, and this one is saying 4.2. So the numbers were very far off uh, on those. So immediately we know you can't go off of this. Uh, it is not accurate at all. Uh, let's go maximum SPL on the shorter port, peaking 65 hertz, 136.35, which as you saw was not it. And on the longer port, 134.8, which as you saw was not it. Uh, we're talking very, very few watts to get that number. So that is also incorrect. This is not taking into account any effect of the vehicle itself, is what they might call cabin gain. Uh, same thing can happen in a room for home theater or anything like that. But um, further proving this is not accurate, uh, the vehicle itself is the reason why it peaks where it peaks. Uh, that's what the vehicle wants. And going off of this theory, it uh, it shouldn't work uh, at all. Even this one, uh, we were playing right at tuning and tuned a little bit lower. It's a little bit louder. So let's move on to impedance. We we're at 2.4 ohms at the peak, which was 64 hertz, which that's saying 2.593. That is reasonably close. Um, I can't scoff a whole lot about that, but on the longer port, we're talking 4.5, uh, 4.4, and we tested 4.2. So that's also not that far off. So in terms of this, uh, that could possibly be a reliable tool there, uh, but you also have to consider um, in this case, the higher impedance was louder, as it often is. Uh, usually more impedance rise is more efficient, as was demonstrated. So you don't even really want to base off of this of, well, it says I should be playing down here, you know, at tuning. I'll fight, uh, fight the impedance rise that way. But that's not where it was loudest by far. It'd fall off quite a bit. It's louder up here where the impedance is higher. So in terms of looking back at this, yeah, it might kind of give you an idea of where you may end up if you know where it's going to peak. Uh, but all in all, you can't really use this information beforehand in your design. So that's all the information on that one. Now let's load up Basebox Pro and compare. Okay, so now we're looking at Basebox Pro. And the orange line is going to be our shorter port. The yellow line is going to be our longer port. So what we can tell from here, 64 hertz where we were playing saying 1.26 uh, dB gain with the shorter port. Uh, with the longer port is actually negative 1.78 dB, which we know is not true. Uh, there was not even that much variance between them. There's only 0.3. But this is also saying that we're peaking uh, down here closer to 53, 54 hertz. Now, one other thing to point out here is on the vents. Uh, this will calculate for having two flared vents uh, but our tuning frequencies are different. Um, 60 hertz on the shorter port and 67 on the longer. Uh, so they're already different from the other one, which is whatever. There's a little bit of different calculation there. 
but uh, when we go into other graphing, such as impedance. Uh, let's get back over to 64 hertz. And unfortunately, I can't make this any this graph any larger. But 4.2 ohms um, on the let's see which one is that on. That is on the shorter port, which is pretty accurate, and on the longer, 2.3. So again, pretty close to accurate there. But again, we also know what we're playing, so we can halfway anticipate that. Uh, let's see here, the amplitude response, so 2,000 watts, let me uh, clear the graph here, and so we've got at 64 hertz on the longer port, 125.8, obviously we know that was not true, and on the shorter, 122.7 so that's saying there's 3 dB at that uh, playing frequency which there obviously was not uh, and also for our input power way off course there um, so when we look back here you know we're talking about having a, a negative or even if we're on the the other one um, 1 1.26 dB of gain in that box there's way more than that in that box in all reality especially uh, when you factor in the vehicle. So uh, we can't go by that at all. You can't, even between programs, one saying, you know, several dB gain, the other words next to nothing. So that's just goes to show that two different programs or even show different things. If it was that perfect, uh, both of them would say the same thing, which they aren't, and neither of them are showing the actual result, which you already saw from actual testing. So we get different port lengths, we get different tunings, we get different gain, we get everything different, except for the estimation of impedance at the playing frequency, which surprisingly was pretty accurate. Um, that would be because it's all electrical. Uh, everything that's factoring has nothing to do with the vehicle uh, at all, just the enclosure. So chalk a victory up for that one. Both of them seem to do that. But outside of that... Um, they're both way, way, way off. Um, you got to use your, your own gut and knowledge and that kind of thing in building these things. You can't go off of these simulations and expect the world of it, especially when it says, well, these are going to do 160s. It's, it's not. Um, I mean, this is lowballing it. You don't know everything about the vehicle and how it's going to act. So all of this is uh, more or less just to show how wrong they are with even peak frequency, frequency response, any of that. Um, if you don't really, really understand it, go off what the manufacturer tells you for an enclosure. Go off of what other people have done that's worked out for them that you've heard it. It sounds good. Go off of that. Don't always go off of these modeling programs. They're not accurate. Uh, they might be able to give you kind of a ballpark, and sometimes they might line up halfway well. In this case, they are way, way, way off and should not be trusted. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe. Hit the notification bell right next to there. And uh, we'll have some more of these Tech Stuff Tuesday videos. Uh, trying to do them every week. Sometimes you get busy. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit the like. Comment below on what you think about this video. Check out some of the other videos. If you have any suggestions, throw those in the videos too. If you have any questions, ask them below. And uh, we'll answer them as best we can, as quickly as we can. And we'll see you again in another Tech Stuff Tuesday.